Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Welcome back friends. Welcome back to Kami Microbial Just Channel. Today in this video lecture we are going to talk about protein degradation or proteolysis or ubiquitination. Now in previous video if you guys remember we talked about post translational modification and post translational modification if you guys remember we talked about the types of post translational modification and in post translational modification we also talked about that we have also protein degradation and uh, prot uh, we have uh, uh, ubiquitination or uh, we have also the protein splicing and protein folding which is also you know the part of post translational modification but we uh, discuss all the types of post translational modification and we also discuss the protein splicing which is mentioned in post translational modification and we also discuss the protein folding as well in post translational modification now this is another video lecture which is we can say that related to post translational modification and in this video we are going to talk about protein degradation proteolysis or ubiquitination so what are these and uh, what are the introduction we will be talking all these in this video lecture so please stay tuned and keep watching so let's start So in this video we are going to talk about the introduction of protein degradation we are going to talk about the requirements and we are going to talk about the mechanism of protein degradation first of all let's start the topic with the introduction now what is protein degradation or proteolysis or ubiquitination protein degradation as the name suggests protein means the amino acid chain or the polypeptide chain which should be you know degraded or which should be converted into a small peptide chain or short peptide chain or in, into amino acid proteolysis means so proteo means protein lysis means splitting of the protein and similarly ubiquitination so ubiquitination is nothing but it is a kinds of uh, what we can say protein which is attached to the unfolded or incorrect folded or misfolded or we can say those protein which are workless which don't have function in the cell so each kinds of uh, ubiquitin protein attach with this protein and after that it will tag the protein for the degradation so this phenomenon is called as ubiquitination okay so now if we discuss it uh, in a detail so what happen we have a misfolded protein which is present inside a body misfolded or inside a cell or inside a body misfolded protein or workless protein or those protein which are not correctly folded which don't have any function inside the cell so what happen this protein are creating a problem inside the cell or it will further causes disease inside the human body or inside the body for example alzheimer disease or, or if such protein are not degraded then it will cause alzheimer disease cancer disease or inflammatory like disease uh, means rheumatoid arthritis okay so such protein should be degraded so what happen we have different kinds of ubiquitins so ubiquitin will present inside the cell and it will get activated once it will get activated through a ubiquitin enzymes so once it will get activated then it will bind to the misfolded or incorrect folded or un or uh, you know workless protein once it bind on it so then what happen it will degrade or it will tag the protein for the degradation after that this protein will be shifted to the proteasome proteasome is nothing but it's a kinds of machinery which is present inside the cell or we can say it's an enzyme which can degrade the misfolded or which can degrade the uh, workless protein once it degraded so it will be converted into amino acid after that what happen this amino acid once it can this protein are converted or misfolded form of the protein are converted into amino acid by this proteasome then this amino acid will be again rejoined together and it will be you know correctly rejoined together or sequentially it will be rejoined together and it will give a correct polypeptide chain after that maybe this protein will be folded so this is all idea about the uh, protein degradation and why it is important okay so let's explain it with the help of a diagram so what happen if let's suppose this is the misfolded of the protein as you can see so what happened this protein should be degraded by this way we have 
a ubiquitin as you can see so ubiquitin will attach on it through a bond as you can see so let's suppose this blue circle as you can see this is the ubiquitin and this is let's suppose the misfolded protein as you can see so uh, ubiquitin will attach on it now this is tagged protein and this is the protein which is ready for the degradation remember the bond which is made by protein and uh, uh, which is made between protein and this ubiquitin we call it esopeptide bond now this protein is then shifted by ubiquitin enzymes to proteosome and after that this protein will be converted into a short polypeptide chain or we can say amino acid as we can see this will be short polypeptide or amino acid okay and after that this amino acid are then you know correctly uh, connected with each other and it will make a correct polypeptide chain so let's suppose this is correct or functional protein so this is the idea about the proteolysis or protein degradation okay now what we required for the proteolysis or protein degradation so let me write so in this case we required ubiquitin enzymes and we required ubiquitin protein as well so let me write so we required ub quitin protein second we required ubiquitin enzyme which we denoted with e okay so there are almost three ubiquitin enzymes which are involved for the protein degradation or, or which are involved for the ubiquitination these enzymes are ubiquitin activating enzymes which we denoted with e1 now what actually this enzyme will do this enzyme will activate the ubiquitin and this enzyme required atp so we can say it is the atp dependent enzyme so once it bind with the ubiquitin so it required the atp for the binding on the uh, ubiquitin and then this atp will be converted into adenosine monophosphate which will give energy okay so this enzyme is just for uh, just required for the ubiquitin activation second we required ubiquitin conjugating enzyme and we denoted it with e2 now what are the main function of this e2 it will you know uh, transfer the activated ubiquitin which are activated with e1 it will transfer this ubiquitin to the e2 cysteine residues okay and after that we required another enzyme which we call that so third we required ub ubiquitin ligase and we denoted it with e3 this enzyme will transfer the ubiqui uh, this tagged or target protein to the proteasome for the degradation so this is these are the requirement which we need for the proteolysis or which the cell need for the protein degradation now let's talk the mechanism what happened we have let's suppose the target protein 
So let's talk about the mechanism of this protein degradation or proteolysis. So what happened? We have the ubiquitin. So let me draw. All of you better know ubiquitin is also a protein. So first of all, we have a ubiquitin protein which is get activated. It is just present inside the cell but it will be not in an activated form. So what happened once the misfolded protein are formed or once the protein which don't have any function so then what happened different kinds of ubiquitin enzymes will get activated but first of all we have ubiquitin protein let me draw. So let's suppose this is the protein as you can see and all of you better know protein have uh, one carboxylic end and they have one uh, amino group side chain as well etc so let's suppose they have the carboxylic end as you can see okay what happened first of all the e1 will bind on it so let's suppose e1 now this e1 having the atp it will bind to this carboxylic end of this ubiquitin once it bind on it so then ubiquitin will get activated and what happened this atp will be converted into AMP and pyrophosphate and after that we will get the structure like that okay so this is the structure of the ubiquitin and this is the E1 enzyme which are bounded here now once E1 enzyme bind here so then this ubiquitin will get activated after that what happened the second enzyme will react with this ubiquitin with this activated ubiquitin so let's suppose this is the second enzyme. This second enzyme will release the E1 from this position and then it will replace the E1 with E2 and after that this ubiquitin will attach to E2. E2 is also enzyme and all of you better know enzyme is also protein. So what happened this ubiquitin will attach to this E2 with cysteine residues. So then we will get the structure like that. So let's suppose this is the E2. Now it replaced the E1 as you can see. And let's suppose this is the cysteine residues and it will this ubiquitin will bind to this E2. Okay. After that what happened this ubiquitin will react with another enzyme which we call that E3. So what actually E3 will do? This E3 will once this protein will will bind with the or this ubiquitin having e2 will bind to e3 then this e3 will just you know bring this ubiquitin to the uh, misfolded protein or uh, workless protein so let's suppose this is the misfolded form of the protein as you can see and this is let's suppose the ubiquitin which is then formed now this is the ubiquitin as you can see once it form then e3 will bind here so let's suppose this is the e3 so once e3 will bind here so then it will just bring this ubiquitin to misfolded protein now this is the misfolded protein and then a bond will be formed as we can see now once the bond which are formed between this ubiquitin activated ubiquitin and this misfolded protein by this E3 enzyme then we call that esopeptide bond. Now this esopeptide bond is very important. Now this protein is looking uh, this protein is uh, or we can say this is the, the target protein. Now protein is become targeted and this protein is ready for the degradation. Okay, so after that what happened, this is called ubiquitination. Now once the ubiquitin attach with the protein, then we call it ubiquitin protein. Now when they have one ubiquitin, we call it mono ubiquitination. If they have two protein, ubiquitin protein, then we have, we call that dye. If they have many ubiquitin protein, then we call it multi ubiquitination. If they have uh, more than three or four then we call it poly ubiquitination so what happened this is let's suppose the uh, situation let's suppose there will be another another so then the phenomena will be called a poly ubiquitination now this is poly ubiquitinated as you can see this protein is poly ubiquitinated multi ubiquitinated or mono ubiquitinated let's suppose you know it depend upon this ubiquitination will depend upon 
the protein structure if the protein size structure is large then there will be a lot of ubiquitin attached if the protein structure are small if the protein size is small or the protein mass is small so then uh, or uh, having low uh, molecular weight so then what happen a very less ubiquitin will attached here or one ubiquitin will attach here so it will depend so this ubiquitin attachment depend on the protein so what what kind of protein we have either the protein is small either the protein have low molecular weight or not so then after that ubiquitin a number of ubiquitin will attach here so let's suppose in this case the protein size is a little bit large so that's why three protein uh, ubiquitin protein are attached here and after that you know this three protein as you can see will bring this misfolded protein this is misfolded workless protein now it will be you know brought by each ubiquitin protein to the proteasome so let's suppose this is the proteasome so they have also 19 s cap as you can see so let's suppose these are the 19 s cap of this uh, proteasome these are what these are the proteasomes okay now what happened this ubiquitin will bind on it as you can see and they are carrying this misfolded protein so once it bind on the lid or on the cap s cap of this proteasome so then the lid will be open after that what happen once the lid open so then it will you know inject it or internalize or put this misfolded protein into proteasome and then what happen this ubiquitin will be you know dissociated from this misfolded protein so once it dissociated from the misfolded protein then it will be used or it will be further recycled as you can see after that it will be recycled for another or it will be used for another misfolded protein now this protein are then you know internalized inside this proteasome and after that we get a small amino acid as you can see or small polypeptide chain now this polypeptide this is called protein degradation or uh, proteolysis after they the, this protein will be you know this amino acid will be correctly uh, connected or rejoined with each other and make a correct protein and in future this protein will be you know folded correctly so this is all about the protein degradation and uh, ubiquitination okay i hope you get idea about that but still if you have any kind of a question in your mind you can write it into a comment If you like this video make sure to hit the like button share this video and subscribe the channel thank you so much for watching